Hey guys, it's Kelsey. Welcome back to my channel. So I quickly wanted to get up part two for you guys of my steamy book recommendations video. Yeah, I love steamy books, so I want to recommend as many as I can to you guys. I hope you like part one and I want to quickly follow that up with part two here. So I'm going to do the exact same thing where I put up a little card right here so you can kind of see everything you need to see real quick. Um, and I'll just quickly go through each one, kind of speed round again. Let me know what you guys think of this kind of like different format that I'm doing. If you like, you know, me going quicker through the book and getting a few more books in here or if you like when I go into kind of a more in-depth explanation each book can kind of go through each book a little bit deeper so let me know which ones you guys like better um, or if you guys like both I can kind of you know alternate between going a little bit more in-depth with some videos where maybe I have less books to talk about and go a little bit faster in videos where I like this where I have 10 almost 20 books to recommend for you guys let's jump right into this video it isn't super long Okay, so the first book I want to talk about today is Bringing Down the Duke by Evie Dunmore, or I guess better, it's the League of Extraordinary Women series by Evie Dunmore. And only the first two books of the series are out yet, but I loved both of them, and they are definitely see me and definitely belong on this list. So Bringing Down the Duke is a historical romance by Evie Dunmore, as I said, and this series focuses on a group of girls and each book um, focuses on a different main character who is a different friend of that friend group. And what makes this series one of my favorite historical romance series is that the women in this group are all suffragists. So I just think that's a really fun kind of like twist on a classic historical romance book. And this book is definitely a five out of five for me. I love, um, I love this book so much. It's one of my all time favorite books. And as far as seaminess goes, I give it a two out of three it is perfect it is the perfect level of slow burn build up bam like happiness so it's like the perfect like amount where it's not too much it's not in your face and it's not like whoa that was fast but it's like you know you know it just it just plays out really well and I like I have no changes no edits no notes no notes for my new girl fans out there but so good highly recommend this book and again the theme two out of three just perfect for me okay the next book that I want to talk about is House of Earth and Blood which is the first book in the New Crescent City series by Sarah J Moss and I guess this you could say is a contemporary fantasy romance series again only the first book is out so I'm only referring to the first book right now but in this book, we follow our main character, Bryce, and she is half fey, half human, and she's just kind of going out, partying, living her best life, when suddenly her best friend is murdered and her life is basically flipped upside down and she has, like, no idea what's going on anymore and all these things are happening and she, like, you know, it's just thrown into this like craziness that's all of a sudden happening around her and I love Sarah J Maas she's one of my all-time favorite authors but this is unfortunately not one of my favorite books by her I do give this book a four to five because I did still think it was really good um but it's just not my favorite Sarah J Maas book and as far as theme I'm gonna give this book a two out of three because it does have a lot of um slow burn and build up and then we kind of get to the end where things pick up a little bit but it was actually kind of a tamer book I feel like for Sarah J Moss she definitely knows how to bring the steam bring the sexual tension like bring all of that stuff and I definitely thought she did bring it in this book um it just maybe was like if it's normally here it's like which again wasn't a problem I actually really liked the like intimacy element of this book um just this book in general wasn't my favorite um, and I think that was just the nature of it kind of being the first book in a new fantasy series that she was writing and the first basically first hundred pages I would say was basically kind of information overload where she's explaining this like really robust city and like has all these different creatures from like fae to humans to angels, werewolves, vampires and like every single magical creature like ever to roam the world. Um, lives in this city and there's just a lot going on so you know we're learning about that we're learning about the different characters and all of this stuff so the beginning of the book is a lot of information and just like kind of laying it all out there and then it definitely does pick up in the second half but yeah that kind of slow start is kind of why I can't give the book a full five out of five um nonetheless I definitely do recommend it and if you're a Sarah J Moss fan you probably have already read it, so let's move on to the next one. Okay, moving on. The next series that I want to talk about is the Imperium series by Claire Legrand, and this is a fantasy series, and this is not my favorite fantasy series that I've ever read. 
It's actually probably down low on the list and it's not one that I often recommend because again, it's not that it was bad, but there's just so many other fantasy and fantasy romance series that I love so much more that I'm going to recommend over this series. But this series, we focus on our main character, Riel, um, and our other main character, Eliana, and they basically have these like super, super natural abilities where they're just so much more powerful than everybody else in this world, which... You know kind of puts them in this like weird position where you know they could kill everyone around them if they wanted to so they have to basically choose to be good or choose to be evil right and throughout the books you kind of watch like each of them struggle in a different way but like with handling the power and you know the power going to their head and you know dealing with people wanting to control them when they can you know kill the people around them easily and watch those people control them when they're stronger and you know kind of all of that kind of internal struggle that they have because they are so strong so again it's not the series was bad or anything like that it's just definitely not my favorite fantasy series um so for that reason i do give it a 3.5 out of 5 um and as far as steaminess i would give it a 2 out of 3 i thought the steaminess level um was pretty good it does carry through all three books you kind of get it with each book you don't really have to like wait for like you know the relationship to build for the first book or two and then you know all comes together at at the end it kind of happens throughout and then it develops and it grows and you know different characters and whatnot so the steaminess I thought was actually really good but again um the series as a whole just isn't my favorite fantasy series okay so the next book that I want to talk about is The Viscount Who Loved Me by Julia Quinn and this is book two of the Bridgerton series so if you live on planet earth you've probably heard of Bridgerton as it is a new Netflix show and like it's the most watched Netflix show of like all time and I watched it, I've seen it twice, and I'm obsessed with it. I thought it was so good. So instead of going back and reading the first book, because the first season is about the first book, I jumped ahead to the second book to kind of find out what happens next. And for those who don't know, the second book focuses on the eldest brother, Antony. So our first book focuses on Daphne. She is the eldest daughter. And this book focuses on Antony, the oldest son. And he is Viscount Bridgerton. He, after the death of his father, kind of takes on the responsibilities of Viscount. And he's basically, you know, in charge of his whole family. Family. So this is his love story. So I'm not going to say anything because I don't want to give it away for all my Bridgerton fans out there. But it hurts me to say this. But this is not my favorite historical romance book. So I love historical romance is one of my favorite genres. And the past month, I've really read a lot of historical romance books. And unfortunately, this one just isn't as good as some of the other ones I've read. I just felt at times it was a little bit corny and a little bit cheesy and I know like they kind of go with the historical romance genre but you know I just love some other historical romance books so much like Bringing Down the Duke that I mentioned before and some other books um, that I'm going to talk about in my end of month wrap up video um, so I'm not going to go into it now but again unfortunately it's just not my favorite historical romance book but as far as theme I thought that this was really good. I loved the build up, the slow burn, the like flirtation, the banter, all of that was so good and when we finally got to the coming together if you will Oh, so good it wasn't too much it wasn't too little you know it it satisfied what I was looking for sorry it was a really bad choice of words but it wasn't too much sometimes I find in books like the Nevernight Chronicles that I talked about in my last video where it's a little bit too detailed and too vulgar that it's like mm, that's too much like I don't want to read those words like I get what you're saying like tell me without telling me you know what I mean so I thought that this book did that perfect job of like saying it but not too far you know what I mean so as far as theme perfect as far as the plot mm, okay the next book I want to talk about is potentially one of my favorite books of all time and that is A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J Maas and that is the second book in A Court of Thorns and Roses and I mean it's one of my favorite series and this is my favorite book of the series just everything about it is perfect it is a five out of five and it is definitely a perfect two out of three for steam the build-up is there the passion is there <laughs> I'm getting flustered I just love this book so much like I think what's so good about this book is definitely the buildup. It's like, you see it coming, you know what's gonna happen, but why are they making us wait? Like, 
oh my god are you trying to kill me but like when we get there i'm not gonna say anything because i don't want to give it away but if you like steam but like a good steam not like uh rushed or like over the top but like if you like a steamy relationship where like it's good a court of thorns and roses read the second read the first book first obviously but when you get to the second book i want you to come back to this video and tell me how good it was like honestly it's so good okay i'm gonna shut up now okay and the last book that i want to talk about today is in bed with a highlander by maya banks and this is another historical romance and this historical romance is a little bit different than your you know typical traditional historical romances as it takes place in scotland instead of england which i actually really liked because i really like like scottish accents like when they're like i see a bonnie lass like <laughs> I don't know why I just really like it so it was like fun to read them like talk like that and you know all of those Scottish words that they like use in Outlander a lot right so you know the banter and all of that and the setting and I like that a lot about this book but unfortunately again it's just not one of my favorite historical romances um I really like fast-paced books but I thought like this book was so fast paced it almost felt rushed like we would go from like scene to scene and it was like bam 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 I was almost like no oh, maybe like build it up a little bit like don't just give it to me like make me want it like I'm sorry that just sounds so bad but like I don't even mean that for like the steaminess I just mean like the whole book like just the relationship like I wish the relationship was built a little bit slower the steam as well I guess you could say I wish it was a little bit more of a slow burn that like you wanted it before they gave it to you not they give it to you and then you want it you know what I mean and those are like weird words to say I'm sorry but like I just wish it was a little bit slower and just like built a little bit more. It just felt rushed at times. So I guess I would give this book a four to five because it wasn't bad and I would rather a book be too fast paced than super slow paced and then it's just boring. So I do give it a four out of five, you know, not my favorite historical romance, not bringing down the Duke where it's getting a five out of five for sure. Um, and as far as steam, honestly, it's a three out of three if you want steam read in bed with a highlander by maya banks or i think read any maya banks book because i'm pretty sure like she does steam that's like her shtick if you will so again i just thought it was a little bit too much a little bit too in your face but it wasn't like horrible i guess so three out of three for steam a four to five for the book and yeah so that is all that I have for today. I hope you guys liked it. I hope you guys get some good recommendations out of these books. But yeah, that is all I have. So please like this video. Please subscribe if you are not already because it really supports my channel. And as always, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.